What's causing all that to go uphill? I'm looking at the camera. What's making that happen? Anti-gravity outer space stuck liquid. Hey, welcome to Midnight Science Club at where is this place? Faraday Studio. Faraday Studio. Really? Mm-hmm. Glad to see you, bud. Hey, gotcha. Yeah, that's a wizard handshake. I'm Jake Wizard Four with my sidekick Beckett, and you are a wit. He's a wit. He's wizard a wizard in training. Wizard in training, and he's trying to move up in the scale. You started out as a quarter wit, right? Mm-hmm. Then when you got you to half wit. So we do some advanced training occasionally for wits. I want to torment him a little bit. <laughs> do I torment you? Quite often. Quite often, yes. It keeps him humble. So this is just a thinking exercise. It's kind of interesting. There's an interesting bit of science here that you get to see. You don't get to see very often, but you're going to watch him try to think, and it won't hurt too much. Let's hope not. I'm going to write a word on here. Have you ever heard of that word? I have. Oh, you have heard. Well, let's yes. show people what it is. Waft. Waft. What does waft mean? Waft is like you don't want to like take a big sniff of like a chemical. You like you waft it. You do like one of one of those. Yeah, everybody, if you want to be a wizard or a, or a witch, you have to know this term. It's, it's sometimes it's necessary. Waft. The reason I brought up the word waft. You see, I've got a bottle of a, of a reagent here. What's it say? Ammonium hydroxide. And what is the formula for that? NH4OH. NH4. There's a lot of hydrogens in there. There's four of them, five hydrogens, and one nitrogen. Well, that doesn't sound very, I mean, a nitrogen, we breathe that, right? Yep. And oxygens, we breathe that. Mm -hmm. And hydrogen is just, you know, a simple little gas. So those three gases make this clear liquid. Isn't that amazing how that works? This is mean stuff. What's that see right there? Where does it say? Conk. Conk. What do you think that means? Conk. Con. Concentrate. Yes, yeah, mean stuff. This uh, stuff I'm pulling off here is a paraffin film that chemists use to seal up uh, bottles that they're not going to get into for a while so it doesn't leak. Try to keep the leakage down, especially this stuff. Oh! <coughs> Time to walk, buddy. Oh, yeah. Listen, I haven't even opened it yet. Oh, gosh. I haven't even got it opened yet. Man, I, I, <laughs> I think I like, I'm messing around. Oh, jeez, Louise. I mean, Louise, I just got the lid. Waft, 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 waft. Waft away. Waft, waft. Waft oh. away. Man, that stuff may bring tears to your eyes. I mean, even from here in the studio, but you, that's the, I'd want to. Oh. Hey, it's Jake Wizard 4 here at Faraday Studios. We got our friends over at Hardware Science to put together a sweet little bundle. We call it the Green Bundle. It's a book and a couple of sweet kits that are on sale. Normally this would go together for what, 60 bucks, I heard them say, where we're gonna sell it to you for 40 bucks. These are called Hardware Science Kits and they make a whole bunch of them. They're really cool. You use items that are in the kit and a few things from around the house that allow you to learn how to think like a scientist. This kit is called Desktop hydroponics. You say, I don't think I have anything to do with hydroponics, do I? Yes, you do. It's a part of your daily life. Balloon science. You can get a lot of trouble with balloons. And you can also learn a lot of science, especially basic physics. And some of the secrets of Newton's laws of motion. The Wizard's Book of Science Secrets by, who is it? Who is it? Wizard 4. Son of a gun. He must be a good looking guy. Aha! The green bundle. Here's this setup, this hydroponics it demonstrates how water moves through the soil and gets up to the seed and the seed transpires and grows. This is a completed version of the balloon powered car, a construction and an analog thinking. If you want to get your hands on this, just check down below and, and it'll show you how to do it. You can order this stuff, but I encourage you to do it quick because we've got a limited number of these and we're not going to be selling them very long because they're going to go fast. People really love these kits, so get your hands on them. This is just a simple demonstration, but there's something bigger, a grander idea. This is an old, it was called ammonia fountain. I want to get an idea into your head other than just messing with ammonia. Man, that is mad I don't stuff. want to mess with any more ammonia. So what, I, what stinks. Well, we're gonna, so see what I've got on the table. I've got some ammonium hydroxide, right? Mm -hmm. Now what is that? Do you recognize what that is? That's a torch, but it looks like a teapot. It looks like a little teapot ray gun, you know. A glass beaker. Okay, now that's, that's not a beaker. Not a beaker. That's a flask. Flask. Okay, we call it a round bottom flask or a boiling oh. flask. I wonder why they call it a round bottom flask. Because it's round bottom. Right, there you go. And then I've got a, a big beaker. That's what is that? Beaker. That's a three liter beaker. And in it, I have this magical, what do you think that is? Fruit punch. Or it oh. could just be colored water. Okay. Yeah. And then what do I have here? A glass tube. And it just so happens it fits right in there. How do you like them apples? Pretty heavy? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
a liter and a half, maybe. Maybe that's five pounds. That's heavy enough to get your attention, right? Oh, yeah. If I dropped that on your head, you'd know it. Oh, I would know it. Yeah, you'd know it. So it does take some muscle to lift that, move it, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just keep, put that in your head. So what we're going to do without doing too much talking is we're going to put some of that ammonia, just a little bit, a few t tablespoons of that ammonia into this flask. And cover our noses. You're going to put on your goggles when we start to do this. And I'll put that on there. And we're going to heat this flask up a little bit mm -hmm. to get that liquid ammonia to break down ammonium hydroxide. Yep. I'm going to try to break it up a little bit to get ammonia gas in H3. So what are we going to do? A few tablespoons of that in there and heat it up and make NH3. And then I'm going to do something with it. You're going to sit there and watch and see if you can figure out what the heck is going on. Okay, that's your job, being a whip. All right. <clears throat> okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No. Oh. Come on, Jake, hurry up. Get it on there. Dude, you doggone. <sighs> wow. Okay, you got it going. You get that out there. Okay. So I'm not going to just stick that straight in that fire. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make a hot spot. Okay. I don't want to crack that glass. Yeah, see if we can get to boil. I don't want that to hold still because I'll get a hot spot on the glass. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I want to get that heat spread out down there. Mm -hmm. You see anything going on in there? It's starting to steam. Starting to steam, huh? Evaporating. <whistles> no any songs, any ammonia jokes? Oh, there she's starting to boil, isn't she? You see it fuzzing up down mm -hmm. in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think that air's still in there? No. Or did it, well, why is it not in there? Because it went up with the heat. The heat guy shoved it up? Well, we're, we're generating a lot of gas in there, aren't we? Yeah. Might have pushed that air out of there. Mm -hmm. That's boiling in there pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and pull that out of there and turn that off. Here we go. I'm going in in three, two, one. Let's see what's going on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh. What's going on? The water's rising into the tube. The what is what? The water's going up the tube. The water's going up the tube? Well, how's that happening? What, what, what is this? What is going on? Holy moly. Wow, that is, that's cool. That's getting heavy. That water's going up in there. A pretty good lick, isn't it? Uh-huh. You grab your chin and go, what's making that happen? That's going. Uh-huh. It's getting heavy. It's getting heavy. What's causing all that to go uphill? I think it's going to take the whole darn thing. My gosh, look at that. That's weird. What lifted that, that, that lifted that much weight up that high? Now look, look what's left. A drop. A drop. All that liquid went uphill. Defied gravity. Defied gravity. What is this stuff? Super concentrated anti-gravity outer space stuck liquid? Something like that. How did that happen? I'm posing that to him to explain it. How did all that liquid that was in here move uphill, and then all that liquid goes, yeah! So I have a theory. And now see what you're doing right now is pure science, isn't it? Pure science. Yes, look at this, look at his face. He is doing, he's thinking. So when you started to boil the ammonia, uh, okay. the gas started to rise yeah. and it made its way up the tube. Yeah. When you suck it into the liquid, mm -hmm. the liquid went up the tube because there was nothing in there to fill the space where the gas was. So when all the gas left, there had to be something to fill the space. So it acted kind of like a straw when you suck water up the straw and all that went in there. Well, how did that nothing come down and pull that? Are you saying that nothing came down through here and pulled the water up into that? Well, since there was nothing in there, something had to go to fill the space. So Why did it have to go? Who said? Uh, uh, Newton. I don't know if he said that. No, Newton didn't say that. We can cut to the chase. I could torment you for hours with this, couldn't I? Yes. And you're getting bored. Believe it or not, it was not pulled up in, into that flask. It was pushed. What in the world? Push that uphill. 
Something pushed it up that tube. Push, push, sir. Come on, push it. Is there anything else around? What, what else is around here? Oh. What? The air. The air. Let's give the man a hand. <laughs> Atmospheric air pressure pushed it up at 15 pounds per square inch, 14.7. Yeah. That's pushing down like that all the time, right? Like my old fat Aunt Joan sitting on a couch. She hit one end, the other side goes up. I guess I better shut up. I can make people fly on a couch myself. Air pressure pushed it up in there. How could it do that? Well, they are, are what, 60 miles high, our, air, our atmosphere is, and that's a lot of weight pushing down all the time. Pushing down right there, pounds and pounds and pounds of pressure are pushing down, and they just squirted it, pushed that, like sitting on a tube of toothpaste, you know? Just pushed it right up in there. So what did the ammonia have to do with it? It created the empty space. It did. It certainly did. How would it do that? Well, there's something about ammonia. It's very soluble in water. Ammonia dissolves in water real fast. And when we filled this flask with ammonia gas and stuck that thing down in some water, the gas that was in here dissolved in that water and left what? Left the empty space. Yeah, left the vacuum. Yeah. We did it. We, we worked through the process. I'm so proud of you, buddy. That is pure science, pure scientific thinking. I'm really proud of you, man. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little exercise. But just seeing an ammonia fountain was pretty cool, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. To see that, mm -hmm. that stuff go up here. And smelling the ammonia? That was not fun. But you notice you don't have any boogers in your nose right now. Dude, they're not. gone. They're, yeah, they're, they're gone. Them they're boogers are gone. Let's go snort some more of this. Nope. Uh, no, nope. you don't want to snort some more ammonia? Nope. No. Mm -hmm. No moss. No moss. Okay, thank you. See you. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. Say goodbye. That still stinks like a sound. Mm -hmm. Whee!